It is a balmy 19 degrees Celsius today here in Thessaloniki, Greece. And there is about zero wind predicted in the forecast. But alas, it is time for us to begin our journey to Tunisia. We put the dinghy on the deck to raise the stern out of the water because I had to repack the stuffing box on the rudder. So we need to launch that and then we will begin our 19 nautical mile motor to in Anchorage, just outside the small village of Methoni. Before we really get into this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified about new videos like this one. First stop was Mount Olympus, because who doesn't want to stop in Mount Olympus? We did that in two sails. We tied everything down, put the dinghy in the water, motored out of the marina, and then put the dinghy back on the davit so that it was more easily accessible. It's like what, the middle of November? Mm -hmm. I was sweating. Grease, baby. It was nice. We picked up a little bit of a headwind on the way, but it was casual. Getting there via boat, it is more satisfying, I've found, than any other means of travel. Because when you take a plane, it's almost like teleportation in a sense, like you just get there. Being on a boat is very slow. Every time you move the boat, it's its own experience and event and ends up making every little movement of the boat maybe it's only 12 miles or whatever into its own adventure. I guess it's like the slower it is and the more labor intensive, the more satisfying. Got a fish! I can't see First either. one this, nope, not this year, but. <laughs> this sail. First one this sail. <laughs> Ready, fishy? day and age where the actual aspect of moving the human is more of an annoyance and it's all about the destination. Being on the boat really takes you back to the philosophy, I guess, of it's not about the destination, it's about the process. And that is one of my least favorite questions when people are like, what's your destination? Like, uh, the grave? <laughs> the best way to cook potatoes. They cook super quickly. So it took uh, three and a half hours to get here because after the sun went down, we encountered a marine farm that's not on the charts. So we had to navigate through that, but we made it, didn't hit anything. Now we're about to eat a delicious dinner. Hey Tara, thanks for cooking. You're welcome. My pleasure. It's another beautiful sunny day here in Greece and it's like 20 degrees and I think we got about five knots of wind coming out of the north west. That's an aquatic farmer. He's out here working his fields very cool to look to the right and see the, a mountain and be like, wow, that is Mount Olympus. That is the mountain of the gods. The water is glassy and so it is really beautiful. And I can understand why it inspired the Greek people to write about it as they have. And one of the nice things about Greece in the winter is that generally docking is free, unless you're in a private marina, but all the public docks are free. And so sometimes you even get electricity and water for free as well. Turns out the majority of this one's private, so we have to go over there where all the fishing boats hang out and make sure that we don't end up in the way of the fishing boat. So, rewrite. Day. Greece is full of uh, stray dogs. This 
some sleeping. <laughs> right now we are headed to rent a scooter so that we can scoot on over to Mount Olympus and hike the mountain of the gods. No summit today though. What size are you looking? Big. <laughs> Big. <laughs> when I first started traveling, I was okay. pretty much broke. And so I tried to do as much for free as humanly possible. And I completely understand that mindset. But when you spend a little bit of money, it can really increase the experience. If we were trying to spend no money, then we would have either had to try to hitchhike to Mount Olympus or walk or not go. But because we spent whatever 25 euros on a scooter, we now have the autonomy to be able to go wherever we want with the scooter. Sometimes spending that little bit of extra money is gonna take the experience from being memorable to being like really great. You get to go to the place and you get to get there on your own time. Tell me something. We just arrived to the base of Mount Olympus and we're gonna go for a hike. It's a nice change of pace from being out at sea. Try to find some mushrooms. <laughs> we're gonna try to find some mushrooms. These women have baskets full of them, so we're gonna. Those are what three guys. <laughs> 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 From the I thought they were women earlier. No, see, there are women. Told you. Yeah. I don't know how crowded Mount Olympus gets in high season, but in shoulder season, it was pretty much deserted. I mean, we passed some people, but for the vast majority of the hike, we're completely alone. The weather is just so nice in the fall. It's cool and crisp. It's perfect for hiking. We're thinking about making it all the way up to the Refugio, but because of time and delays, we turned around a third to halfway up to the Refugio, we started hiking back down. I like foraging. People are afraid of mushrooms, but a lot of mushrooms are very easily identifiable. Anytime I go for a hike, I'm always looking out for mushrooms. And if I see a mushroom that I don't know what it is, I pull out my phone or I pull out the book and I flip through and see if I can identify that mushroom. And the thing with mushrooms is if you're not sure, then you just don't eat it. I'm pretty sure this is the saffron milk cap, which I'm also pretty sure is edible. I'll need to check when I have internet access, but we're gonna take this one with us and possibly eat it tonight. It's a nice, like, dense, hard mushroom. Beautiful. It is uh, bleeding orange on me. We'll take this baby back, see if we can eat it. I wasn't actually sure if that's what that was when I got it, so I just took it with us, and then I was like, and if it's not, then I'll just chuck it. But I'm pretty sure this is saffron milk cap looked it up sure enough it was and so we ate it it's about as primal as it gets i mean that's what all living things have been doing for forever until yeah. agriculture yeah i would eat that again thanks for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed it if you didn't, that's your problem. Uh, if you did, subscribe and share it with a friend. Big love. See you around.